YouTube. Let's hop right into this. When you see um, the kid named Milo, um, that's me. That was me um, before any medical stuff happened to me. First thing that I, I think I said was, so do you want a penis? <laughs> and he was like, no. <laughs> so that was my first thought. You know, I've learned in, in the past months that it's not that, you know, it has nothing to do with that. It, it's who you feel like you are inside. You don't think you could have had more of a conversation? We're going to hear more of the story, but just right off the top, I'm just saying right now, I'm not enjoying it. Your gender. Like, I cannot imagine living my life as female. At times, he feels like he could hurt himself, you know, just because of the way he feels inside. And I've That's a mental illness, woman. So that so you, you don't give in to the mental illness. I'm sorry I have to stop it. I'm not going to pause it again for another minute. But listen, you cannot do that to children. You cannot say they have a mental illness and then give in to it. That hurts the child more than you know because they're still growing into themselves. Their brain has not mentally, I mean, their brain hasn't fully even grown yet. They're not at their full capacity. So when a kid comes out and says they're struggling with something such as this, you shouldn't just immediately give in and say, yeah, you know what? You, you're struggling. I'm going to do this heard a lot of horror stories about, you know, the percentage of trans kids that commit suicide. I think I regret medically transitioning to male. I've been on testosterone and doing testosterone injections for about seven and a half years. Um, I started when I was 14 in 2015. I also got top surgery, which is double mastectomy with um, kind of like male appearance chest reconstruction when I was 16. I then got a hysterectomy last year when I was 21. The biggest reason was um, because I was getting a lot of pain, um, like atrophy cramping in my uterus. From the testosterone in my head i kind of had this these thoughts of like well if i'm a man then i don't need these maybe like eight months after my hysterectomy i had to go into emergency surgery because one of my um my right ovary twisted inside and kind of died they said it like twisted and it was like I don't know if like the circulation got cut off to it or something and it died and sort of ruptured and now I only have one ovary um, and the ovary that I still have um, I don't know if it's healthy and there's no way to really tell I don't think I just kind of have to hope that it's in there and it's working so my hairline my hair is very thin um, along the hairline so on both sides um all of this is gone and this cannot be regrown um, because the hair is just gone i have a moon face which basically means um there's a lot of fat stored in my face um and that's a side effect of steroids not just testosterone but other steroids too um when women take steroids, like full beard, stubble all the way under my neck. I have really thick body hair all over my body. Testosterone also changed my voice, as you can hear. Um, before testosterone, I had a very, very, very feminine voice. And before I had top surgery, I had like pretty large breasts. Um, I think I was like a C cup. I was so adamant on top surgery is because I just, Felt like I could never get my chest flat enough with a binder. I guess why I think I thought I wanted to become a man as a teenager. As long as I can remember, I've never liked. Before we continue, <clears throat> I want you to hear all the stuff that this young lady had to go through. First, had to get chest surgery, both breasts removed. Had to get have it reconstructed to look like a man's chest and then had to get a hysterectomy had to get their uterus taken out because of the testosterone they were taking was ruining them 
And then one of their ovaries died. Their hairline was receding. She's, now she stores a lot of fat in her face. Now her voice is deeper. Now she gets beard stubbles. And you can't go back from that. This all happened when she was a young child. And you can't go back. People, do, do, do people think that 16 year old, I think this is what a concept that people don't miss. Listen, and I can understand this to a degree. People can't see a concept of how long life can truly be. They think life stops at like 25. Because we see it all the time, right? People don't think past 16. And we see it more in adults. We think that if a kid doesn't make a decision whether they want to be a boy or girl at 16, their whole life is over. When, let's say for a sake, this, this young lady does end up living to be 75 or 80. Are you going to try to tell me the decision she made at 16 was really that important at the time? No. Because for some reason, when people think about teenagers, they see a full-grown adult. Because we get TV shows like Degrassi, Euphoria, right? We get TV shows like that. We have all these TV shows showing high school students. What do we have? Um, what was that movie called? Vampire Diaries. Um, the other, the other uh, TV show, Twilight. We get stuff like that. And even though those are goofy movies about vampire stuff, I get it. It still shows very young people making such big decisions in their life like as if you make a decision at 21 and you make the wrong decision at 21 life is over now obviously there's decisions you can make at 21 like this decision there's like decisions you can make at 16 that could change the course of your life forever but at the same time it's still not over but has she waited till she was in 25 years old maybe life could have got better but we are so quick to tell these young children that if you don't do this now at 16 you won't make it to C25. And we lie to them and manipulate them because 16 is now equals being 40. It's not. They're still children. They have lived a very small portion of their life. When you're 15 years old, you haven't even been alive the quarter. Well, let's say you say you once again live to be 80. You haven't even lived close to half your life yet. And at 16, that's when you need to make these decisions. We had that other little girl we made a video on who made the transition when she was... 11. Liked anything feminine. I've always kind of been like gender neutral with my interests. Um, I was always really into animals and like dinosaurs and stuff. I hated dresses. I hated anything that was considered feminine. I've never, I was never diagnosed with autism, but I'm fairly certain I am autistic just based on life experiences. Growing up, I was a very shy kid, especially in middle school. Um, I just never felt like I fit in anywhere, so I was very shy and I um, was reserved. I feel almost like I'm in a costume. Um, that what I've done to my appearance and my body has almost been a um, survival <laughs> tactic. Um, or a, a, f a form of protection against unwanted attention from men, uh, society's expectations of women. And I just always thought like, you know, that's not me. I can't do that. When I found out about trans stuff online, I truly thought it was the answer. Um, Sorry, I gotta stop it right there. When she found out about trans stuff online, Online, social media is a beautiful place. It can also be very harmful when parents aren't watching their children. And it's so hard because I, I, I can't put accountability on children like some people want to do. Because what people will be quick to do is if she transitions and we come back and be like, man, she was just a kid. And then we go to those same people who were encouraging her to transition if we went to those same people and say, well, why'd you do it? Wasn't she just a kid? They'll, they'll, they won't. If this girl says, I want to be a guy, or she says, I want to be a female again, those same people would be like, well, yeah, I mean, she was just a kid when she made that decision. Exactly. Why do y'all put so much accountability into these kids' hands? Y'all put so much power. And some of y'all are so afraid of kids hating y'all. I find it kind of weird. People really seek validation from children. I think it's kind of weird. Like, if I tell a kid, no, I don't think you should transition, 
people would really think that because if their kid hates them during that part of their life, that it, 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 it affects them so personally. Like, they feel so scared to have their little kid hate them. And I'm not talking about people who are the parents. I'm talking about teachers. I'm talking about adult authorities in their lives. Us adults in the real world, they really think that we really think that this. if we don't tell this kid they're a boy, that this kid's going to hate us. Who cares? It's not about love or hate. It's about saving this young person's life. Because then they end up in a place they can never go back. Instead, of now they have to live the rest of their life regretting that. And yes, they will have to come to that acceptance and there's nothing we can do now. But if we can prevent that from happening, why not do that instead of caring if these kids like us or not? Who cares? It's the same thing I've been talking to you guys about with the teachers. When these teachers want to have these kids transition, these teachers be looking for validation from kindergartners and be like, oh, you little Johnny, who's five year old, called me she. I feel so validated. What are you, a freak? And I don't mean that like a freak for being trans. I mean a freak for getting validation from a child. That's disgusting. You should never put that much power and put that much responsibility and put that much stuff into a little five-year-old to the point where they complete your happiness. Because you know what these teachers do? They go to this five-year-old and be like, Johnny, you have made me so happy for being... You're putting way too much pressure on a five-year-old. That's weird. You're putting pressure on a five-year-old to validate your entire life and decisions as an adult? Are you crazy? Start thinking about the children because we, okay, I'm going to shut up after this, but we find it messed up when we have children who have to, let's say there's a parent in the home and the little kid and the parent is absent, right? Barely ever doing anything. So one of the young kids has to take care of the other kids. We get upset about that kind of stuff. Like, why could you let the kid live their life? Why are they having to do what you're supposed to be doing? Exactly. So don't ever put it on a child to validate you. That doesn't make any sense. You know how much pressure that puts on a young child to validate you as an adult making your own decisions and not dealing with your own problems? We've got to learn to grow up. We cannot stop. We can't keep going everywhere to seek validation from everybody in every situation. We can't. I know it sucks because I've been through it. When I was like 14, reading all this stuff online about how, you know, like... Um, if you are a girl or if you were a girl and you grew up not fitting in with other girls or not liking girly things and feeling like you hated your body um, because it was female that meant that you're a man um, and that's kind of like what I was told by the internet and um, my friends who I met on the internet too who were around my age who also were trans doctors and stuff who specialize in gender stuff told me that everything I was feeling was like signs of gender dysphoria and if I wanted to alleviate this gender dysphoria um, the options were hormone therapy and surgeries and stuff and in retrospect I feel like everything kind of happened really fast it seemed very easy to get these surgeries. It was all covered by insurance and stuff, you know, we didn't have to really pay out of pocket for any of it. Trauma from when I was a teenager going through puberty and I was bullied at school by other girls for being kind of weird and stuff. So now I'm stuck. I'm stuck looking like a man and sounding like a man. I think I completely regret everything I've done. I'm heartbroken. Um, I don't want to be made into a horror story. I don't want my story to be politicized. Hundreds, thousands, millions of trans people who did transition and felt like it was the solution and now they're much happier, but I think I for me, it wasn't the solution because I still have all these problems that I thought would go away and they're still here. I don't know how I'm going to move forward. I don't know how I'm going to accept myself, how I'm going to accept what was done to me. Um, I know I can't blame myself because I was a teenager 
and I thought this was what was the right, I thought this was what the solution would be, but it's not. I feel every day it's, I, I do nothing, I cry and I sleep. Um, I'm thankful to have my parents around to be supportive right now. Because without them, I would probably not be here at all. Thanks for watching, if you did. Well, at first I had feelings of kind of grief that I lost that idealistic daughter that I thought I had. Because, you know, I always had... Before we continue on to that, Mother, I want you to notice that she has said, all my problems, all my problems didn't go away. As we said in the beginning, the mother thought, oh, if I transition them, the, these problems will go away. Nope. Here's the beautiful thing about dealing with stuff mentally, right? I was a depressed kid. I was black in an all-white town, okay? Felt I was adopted I didn't have the same last name as my parents. I was pretty much a weirdo, right? I grew up very weird. I fell into all types of addiction. I fell into porn addiction. I fell into sex addiction. I fell into um, overeating. I was so depressed. I wanted to take my life all the time. If you would have told me at any point that if I would have known about this kind of stuff when I was growing up, we had TikTok and all that. If I had, had TikTok, who knows what I would have done to myself? Because when I was depressed and feeling down every single day, I would have watched some video telling me, well, you know what? Are you sad? Do you feel like you don't fit in? Because I didn't fit in with the boys. I mean, I worked out and I played football, but people still called me weird. And sometimes I could come off very feminine because it's just the way I spoke. You know, I just a fun. I was just a fun dude. And even as I got out of high school, you know, people still did that stuff. If I would have found a TikTok video that said, maybe you're supposed to be a girl. You don't think that would have affected me? Maybe I probably wouldn't have transitioned. But there's a part of me that would have started doing different stuff. I would start evolving myself in different stuff. I might have joined a cult. Who knows what I would have done? It's because you think all this stuff is going to fix you when you're a child. But then when you grow up, you're like, you know what? No, doing all this extra stuff won't change me. When I was going out there and trying to get all the females, when I was going, to, I was going out there trying to make as much money as possible, try to get as much as sex as possible, trying to date all these girls. And doing all these things that I thought was going to help me, it didn't work. It didn't work at all. I still felt sad. And in fact, even when I first got a, when I finally got in a relationship, I got a fiance, everything. I, I, I was following the path that I thought. I was in college. I was, I was a good college student. I was an honor student in college. I was doing all the things that I thought was going to be right. And I wanted, to, you know what happened? After all of that, I still wanted to take my life. I had everything. I had a car. I was, I was a good student. I had a fiance. I was about to live the dream. Still wanted to take my life. Still felt sad. Still couldn't control my emotion. Because that stuff doesn't really help. These external things don't really help. If you're a depressed person, getting a girlfriend or a boyfriend will not make you less depressed. If you're, if you're a really depressed person, you think transitioning is going to make you less depressed? If you're struggling mentally to accept who you truly are, you think any of these external stuff matters? No. It doesn't. That's why therapy or counseling or something, getting a mentor, you have to do something. Because if you... if and this is the harsh reality when you start getting into adulthood. If you don't learn to figure out how to get through this stuff, it's going to hurt you. Like for me now, I still struggle with anxiety and stuff like that. You know what I do today? I've lost weight. I've started going to the gym. I have a mentor that I talk to. I go to confession every week. I deal with my addictions. And I still struggle. And I still try to get past them. Okay. I don't just sit here every day and just try to change something about myself. I just, oh, this is just who I am. And let me make some TikToks about how sad and depressed I am. No, as an adult, we have to grow up. But when you're a young child like she was, that's not what you can do because your parents are supposed to be helping you. But instead of your mom actually helping you now, I don't know. Maybe she changed her ways and maybe she regrets what she did. So I'm not going to kill the mom because I don't know. But at that point in time, she could have easily said, well, let's get you some therapy, Milo, because you transitioning and cutting off your body parts and that, that's probably not the route to go. Taking you from what you were born as and making you into something completely different that your body may reject and you may, you may go through life, a long regret if I do this to you. Maybe, maybe we don't go that route, Milo. Maybe we go another route. Maybe we'll start spending more time together. Maybe we'll start doing these things. But I don't think transitioning you 
And if it doesn't matter, if Milo still disagrees, who cares? You tell Milo, okay, when you're 18, you do what you want to do when you're not in this house. But Milo, right now, I care about you and I love you. And I'm not going to let you do that to yourself here while you're in the house. We're going to try every other route. Let's try the route that doesn't cause you to chop off body parts that you can't get back. Things that are going to ruin your uterus. Now you can't have children. You got one ovary now from the complications of everything. Well, I'm not going to ruin your life, Milo. I'm, I'm going to, well, let's flip this around. All right, let's see what this last thing this mom said. Not be here. Things, things of kind of be here, be here at all. Thanks for watching if you did. Well, at first I had feelings of kind of grief that I lost that idealistic daughter that I thought I had because, you know, I always had visions of the white wedding dress, shopping for the wedding dress, you know, planning the wedding, all these girly images and, you know, Milo's always been Milo, and that hasn't changed. He might look different now, but he's still Milo inside. And I never had a daughter from the day that he was born. I just didn't know it yet. That was goofy to say. Because that doesn't help. Because now, even if Milo's struggling to go back to a girl, you just ripped all that off. You just you pretty much just said, if she ever wants to be a girl again, you pretty much said, you were never a girl. That's why you can't say stuff like that with the kids. You've got to be careful with these kids, man. Man, can we just leave the kids alone? Let them go through this stuff. They're, they're going to have to go through life. We can't stop kids from being depressed and sad and all that kind of stuff. But what we can do as adults and parents, we can make sure that our kids don't go chopping body parts off. We can make sure kids don't go through that kind of stuff. We can make sure kids don't get involved in gang life. We can make sure kids don't get involved in cults. We can do our very best to prevent that by always talking and trying to see if we can't seek help. I know it's tough because as a parent, it's not easy to afford therapy, not easy to afford counseling. But a lot of schools do provide counseling. I did it. I had counseling at some points in my life. And it was free for my parents because I could just go. And I know every school doesn't have that. But dang it, I'm sorry. I understand. It's not always an easy route to find. But dang it, you're just going to have to try. I don't care what it comes down to. If you got to go do a go, go fund me. If you got to find somebody in your town who does counseling, you, you're going to have to go out of your way sometimes. That's just life. It ain't, ain't everything easy. It ain't easy. That's what sucks. Sometimes you're going to have to go out of your way. You're going to have to ask people for money. Sometimes you're going to be down on your luck and your kid is being depressed and they need help that you can't give them. So you're really going to have to go out of your way. You may have to get on the internet, use that email, use that social media, use something to get your kid help. Even if it's going to sacrifice you some time, you're going to be at work. And on your lunch break, you're still trying to figure out how to help your child on your lunch break. You come home, try to talk to your child. You don't get much sleep. And you, you barely get any sleep and you do the best that you can. You go to sleep for four hours because you were talking with your kid all night. It sucks. It does. But when you decide to have a kid and they grow up, you cannot start to neglect them because life gets hard. You're going to have to make sacrifices. You're going to have to lose sleep. It just is what it is sometimes. And I know that sucks. Okay? And I'm not expecting every parent to be perfect in every situation. But if you're listening to this, please do something for your child who's going through this going through this because the last thing you want to do is transition your child and now they have a life full of regret and they're only 21 years old at 21 their life is completely changed there's no going back they're only 21 years old and at 21 they now have their breast uterus all both gone oh one ovary left in their body they have receding hairlines all their fat is held in their face and their voice is forever changed in five years, from six, 16 to 21, that's only five years of their life. And that five years was enough to ruin the rest of their life. Now, Milo can go on to do better things with support and help from other people. And it's going to be a tough road from this point on. And we still have to continue to help. I hope Milo's getting as much help as possible. Because life isn't over, Milo. It doesn't mean you have to take your life. It doesn't. It is what it is at this point. And that really sucks to say that because it sounds so insensitive. But at this point, all we can do now is continue forward. We sometimes as kids, adults make us make bad decisions that put our life on a different path. But you can still help other people, Milo. And if you don't want to do that, that's fine. But you do still have to get help. You still have to get that therapy. And I wouldn't even say rely on your parents because you couldn't rely on them to begin with. Because your parents will validate you no matter what at this point. I suggest you go to therapy, go to counseling, and go to people who are willing to tell you the truth, the harsh realities and the hard life decisions you're going to have to make from this point forward get some good friends not validating friends good friends 
you need to get people in your life that really care about you and don't want you to ever do something like this ever again. I wish you the best, Milo.